Hey everyone, my name is Brian Lois. I'm the founder of NaviUpgrade.com. This is my dog Ollie. Uh, today we're going to do a quick walkthrough of all the components that you need for a Sync 3 upgrade in a Ford Focus. I'm really, really so thankful for you guys for helping me take off uh, the last videos that I've uploaded. And uh, I just want to do a quick little run through here, tell you about where to get the parts, uh, what parts you need, and what parts to look out for so that you don't run into any issues uh, like accidentally getting a Sync 2 module or anything like that by Ollie. <laughs> Alright, so the first thing that I want to go over is the main component of the Sync 3 system, and that's going to be the actual Sync 3 display and APIM module. So that's this guy right here. Uh, so there's a few components that are involved with this unit. You have the main display, the screen, and then if we flip over, you have the LVDS cable, which is what sends the video and touch signal to and from the screen to the APIM module. This is your APIM module right here. APIM stands for Accessory Protocol Interface Module. And there is a 54 pin connector right there, along with either one or two USB, imp uh, USB inputs on the back of this module. Here you have a GPS connector. Uh, this is a FACRA connector, so you'll be plugging in a uh, GPS unit like this later down the line. And what you'll see on the screen side of this module is that there are these brackets along the side. These are the brackets that you need for a Ford Focus. They're the same ones that you see down here. They're actually becoming very difficult to come by now, especially with this bracket. I just heard that Ford started discontinuing this bracket. So I'm actually going to be 3D printing these guys, these brackets right here, along with this. It's going to be one replacement module for both of those, and that's going to be for sale on my site soon, so you don't have to buy this, and you don't have to track these guys down. The reason why I say track these guys down is because you have to get them from a Ford Focus versus the screen and the APIM module, which you can get from any Ford car 2016 plus. Uh, so yeah, let's jump right on into what you don't want. Let's go into Sync 2. So this is a Sync 2 unit, and you can tell that it's a Sync 2, 2 unit, not from how it appears. So see, if you take a look at it here, it looks just like this. I don't know, it looks the exact same. But if you go to the back side, this is where you're going to start noticing some differences. So in this hand, I've got Sync 2. In this hand, I've got Sync 3. Sync 2 actually does not connect to the screen the same way that Sync 3 does. Let me set this aside. On Sync 2, it actually connects with a uh, few pins on the back side. So it goes like that. You really don't want this. Uh, these are in cars that are from 2012 to 2015. So if you find a full uh, setup from a Ford Focus, you're going to want to make sure that it's from a 16 plus if you want to get every component from that car and it's and that'll be Sync 3. So when I talk about Sync 3, I talk about what its features are. That's going to be Android Auto, uh, Apple CarPlay, and just a general better user interface for your car and your infotainment experience. So when I say Sync 2, it's going to be a um, resistive touchscreen. So just imagine what phones were like, touchscreen phones were like before, like the iPhone, where you really had to push the screen. That's what Sync 2 is going to be like. And it's not going to be a pleasant experience for you, especially without Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. Let's jump into some of the differences between the model years. So let's go from 2012 to 2014. 2012 to 2014. We're going to be using this trim piece right here. And you can tell it's a 2012 to 2014 trim piece because it has a hazard switch button right here and a locking switch, a central locking switch button right here. And the reason why you need this over this is strictly because of this locking switch. Also, there are a couple other differences like these uh, vent trim pieces will actually come off and there's a little bit different mounting scenario on the bottom as you can see right there. All right, so on the 15 plus, you're going to want to find one of these. But be careful, because like I said, in 2015, Sync 2 was still being put into the Ford Focus. So if you find a uh, entire kit that has a screen, an APIM, a trim, a mount, and everything, 
be careful if it's a 2015 because you might get stuck with a SYNC 2 unit and not a SYNC 3 unit. So if you're on a car that's 15 plus and you're, or you're on a base model, find yourself a 16 plus car that has everything in it and grab everything from that. Now that leaves a bit of a dilemma for 2012 to 2014, even 2015 owners, because if you find everything, this is going to be SYNC 2. So what I always recommend is if you have a 2012 to uh, 2014 car, you're going to want to buy all this stuff out of a Focus that's 16 plus. Don't get the trim out of it unless you want to sell it to a friend or sell it on eBay. You're going to, and you're going to want to get this separately so that you can have the right trim for your vehicle. Because remember, you want SYNC 3, not SYNC 2. All vehicles that had this trim, that came with this trim, had SYNC 2 in it. So unless you find a car that's already been upgraded to SYNC 3, you're going to be pretty much out of luck there. All right, so next things next is this bracket. This bracket is discontinued from Ford. So if you can get it out of a car, you're going to be in good shape. Uh, I will be 3D printing these on my site very soon so that uh, you can actually just uh, mount these all up and it's going to replace these tabs here along with this entire bracket system and it will mount your ACM, your audio control module as well. And the reason why you need this is this is what actually mounts these things into your car. So let's show you how this all works. I'm going to set the screen aside and I'm going to take an audio control module here and I'm going to just pop it in just like that and up here and it all snaps into place just like that. As you can see, the little nubs on the bottom there fit right into the grooves, and uh, that fits in just like that. And then we take our screen, and it rests in just like that. We put uh, a screw here, a screw here, screw here, screw here, screw here, screw here, and you're pretty much set. Now all you have to do is put this into your car, and you're set. All right, I'm gonna set this aside, and uh, actually, you know what, I'm going to take out I'm going to take out the ACM from this setup here. All right, so let's talk a little bit about radio and the audio control module in the Ford Focus. This module is actually the upgraded module from the premium sound system car. And you can tell that because of this yellow connector right here. So if you'd like to add in XM radio or you'd like to have HD radio in your car, you can actually pull this from any model, premium model year Focus 2012 all the way up to 2018 and this will work with your setup as long as you program it correctly. So uh, like I said the way you can differentiate this from your base one, uh, the one that comes into your car, is it has this little yellow tab right here which signifies XM radio. Uh, I usually don't recommend uh, upgrading to this module because it has a little bit of uh, low level noise um, if you have an entirely amplified system. Don't do that because I've got an amplified system and there's just this little humming, this little high pitch hum. When I had this installed, I went back to the stock ACM, no issues whatsoever. So yeah, this is the HD radio uh, ACM. Uh, next thing is you're going to need a GPS module. These are about 13 bucks on Amazon and this has a blue Fakker connector at the end and uh, just a GPS module right here. We use this on both navigation and non-navigation units for SYNC 3 and the reason why the reason why we use uh, them on the non-navigation units is because it actually gets your uh, position for 911 calls 911 calls and you also get the um, the global GPS time so you don't have to set your clock on your car all the time. All right, so one of the next things that you're going to need for a successful conversion is going to be this USB hub right here. If you're on a 2012 to 2014 car, chances are your hub space is going to be a bit too big. So you'll also need this uh, step down adapter so that you can fit this guy in there just like that and then pop this into your new hub. The most vital piece to this entire puzzle for your SYNC 3 upgrade and a base model focus is going to be this guy right here. This is our Navi Upgrade 4-inch sync to sync 3 upgrade harness. So what it does is it pulls signal 
from your stock sync box, so your four inch sync box, it pulls signal from there, and then it transports that signal all the way up to our sync three A PIM in this here, and then also pulls some uh, vital data to turn the system on from our four inch display connector right here. If you don't have a backup camera, we allow you to add a backup camera using our built-in RCA jacks. And then uh, there's also a hub power adapter that comes off of here and plugs in to your hub power just like that. And then finally, the last connector that's on here is a uh, front controls panel connector. So you can plug, plug in uh, your front control panel and have full control uh, just like you would in the stock premium focus, just like that. What I don't have here to show you that you'll need for your upgrade process is a six foot male to male mini USB cable. If you have a 2015 to 2018 focus and you want to get your front USB port to work, you'll also need a shorter uh, mini USB female to mini USB male to extend from the back hub to your front USB port to get those to work. Now jumping into where you can find these things to buy. The best thing that I always recommend to people is to go to your local junkyard or your local auto dis dismantler or somebody who deals with a lot of uh, cars that are going to the junkyard. Uh, you'll find a lot of these units are very cheap there. If you go to a pick and pull place where you pick it yourself, you're gonna get a much better deal than anywhere else. I'm talking from eBay, me, or even a dismantler that's dismantling cars uh, for you. I've been able to get a full kit, including trim, uh, screen, APIM mount, and uh, an ACM for less than $200 from a local LKQ pick and pull myself. Uh, so that saves you a ton of money. The last thing that I want to recommend is make sure that you always double check your units to make sure they're not SYNC 2 units. My harness does not work with SYNC 2. And the reason why my harness doesn't work with SYNC 2 is because it doesn't tap into the factory GPSM, GPS antenna that is in the older cars. So the reason why I don't support SYNC 2 is just it's old technology. You're not going to be happy with it and it's not going to be that much of an upgrade over your 4 inch SYNC system. All right, so I think I hit most of the questions that everybody asks me when they're going to go buy all the stuff for their car. If you need anything for your upgrade, feel free to hit me up on the comments or check out my website, nabbyupgrade.com. I'd really appreciate a like and subscribe on this video. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them below in the comments. I try to be as helpful as possible and uh, I really look forward to helping you out with your projects and have a good one. Till next time, peace.